Well, there are different theories about the causes for the global financial crisis. Some argue it was because of policy manipulations in East Asia, especially the undervaluation of the Chinese currency causing the global imbalances, as well as housing bubble in the U.S. And when the bubble burst, it led to the global financial crisis. But in my book, I argue it is because of the policy mistakes in the U.S., especially the financial regulation as well as the expansionary monetary policy in the U.S. causing the housing bubbles and the global imbalances. And when the housing bubble in the U.S., it led to a global financial crisis. Well, because the U.S. currency is the global reserve currencies, and uh, it can support U.S. to have huge global imbalances and also the excess liquidity leading to the large housing bubble unit in the U.S. And uh, because the U.S. is the largest economy in the world, and uh, so when the financial sector in the U.S. collapse, it caused in the whole global in a contingency and the crisis. The current global attention is the austerities in a crisis hit country, as well as the rescue to the crisis hit country. But I think those kind of policies do not address the structural issues in a crisis country. And uh, without the structural reform, they cannot resume their competitiveness and they won't be able to get out of the current sluggish and uh, in a slow growth in their economy. Well, it all depends on the situation that without a structural reform, then they are going to have something like the lost decades in Japan. And under the current situation, the unemployment will be high, the growth will be low, and the government debt will be accumulated quicker. And the proposal I have in the book that is to have a global infrastructure initiative. That kind of initiative can create a space for them to carry out the structural reform. It's a much better alternative than the lost decades that they may encounter. Well, since the austerity does not work, and I think it's better to use the government debt to support productivity enhancing type of infrastructure investment. We know that in the UK, there's room for those kind of investment. So if you can make this type of productivity enhancing infrastructure investment in the short run, it will create demand, job, and growth. But in the long run, it can also enhance the growth and productivities and increase the government revenue to pay back the investment now. So it's one step kills two birds.